What is up and welcome back to another Wilds Vlogs. I am back with Corner 5 Games today. We are going to the A-League once again. I haven't done this for a while actually. I don't think I've done this since my uh, third or fourth video on the channel ever. So it has been a long time, but A-League Vlogs have returned. Now tonight's game is between Melbourne Victory, the team I support, and the Newcastle Jets, which is the team Ben supports. So it is going to be very interesting, and I'd uh, imagine rather fiery as well, depending on the scoreline. Now Victory are tipped to win this game. We should win this game, but it's one of those where we're playing at home, but it's away from home, if that makes sense. So it's our home game but played in a different stadium to where we'd normally play, which means we don't have as much of a home ground advantage. Although the uh, ground we're playing at, we do have quite a decent record at. So I'm, I'm all quietly confident, but it's one of those games that could go any way. So I'll leave it there, and you'll be joining us on the way to the game where I meet up with Ben, and we might have a little bit of a chat before the game about what our predictions and our expectations for the match are. Peace. Welcome back. We are now on our way to the ground. We have the wonderful Jeff driving us, Connor Flake Games Associates. He's very kindly donated. Uh, donated. Fucking hell. It's been a long day already. Why don't you direct it? You are a filmmaker after all. <laughs> That's staying in the edit. Welcome back. We are now on our way to the ground. It is a scorching 38 degrees and it is um, just on 6 o'clock in the afternoon, so it is going to be a very hot one tonight. We have a designated driver, luckily. Thank you very much to Jeff for driving us tonight. Uh, I am joined by Corner Flyer Games. He's in the front seat. He's kicked me out into the back. Uh, I'm quickly going to go through what I'm expecting for tonight. I'm expecting a 2-1 victory win. The first half is going to be very boring. It's going to be a lot of possession football, I would imagine, given it's so hot. The second half, I do expect to open up, though, and be not more aggressive, but more counter-attacking. There are going to be a lot of long balls over the top. Hopefully, defenders caught napping. Uh, it is something that Newcastle tend to do late in the second half, is get caught napping. So hopefully, we can hit them on the counter. Uh, I'll throw to Ben now to give his predictions and see what he reckons. Benny, over to you. Thank you, Ben, and uh, thank you for tuning in once again. Thank you very much, Ben, for joining me on this episode of uh, what, as I described earlier, was the first vlog of football I've done for almost two years, I think now, Ben. So um, we'll see you at the game, everyone. I just can't let you go. Lord knows that I've tried to. You said I was the only one. No one likes being like to. You made this mess and left me with the pieces Now I wanna burn all the bridges between us
Hey guys, Ben here from Corner Flag Games and we are now back in the car on our way home or just about to make our way home from the game. What a fantastic scoreline, guys. 2-0 against Melbourne Victory. Some would say that that is justice for last year's grand final. So a big thank you to Terence from Wireless Vlogs who is outside currently having a cigarette and thank you very much to the old man Jeff Stokes, Mr. Father Corner Flag Games for driving us to today's game. I hope you enjoyed today's vlog, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Welcome back. So, we've just got back to the car from the ground. It is, um, it wasn't the result we're after. Um, I think I tipped 2-1 before the game started uh, on the way. I did say to our housemate before we left, I had a bad feeling about the game. And um, I'll, to summarize really quickly, um, we had our chances. We had a lot of possession. I think, I haven't checked the stats, but it felt like we definitely dominated possession. Um, we had our chances. We were very aggressive. As I said before the game, I said it'd be possession first half and very counter-attacking the second half. Uh, that was so for both teams. I think the first half, we our build-up play was really good. Uh, we just lacked anything inside the box. We... We penetrated a few times. We got some good chances inside the box. Couldn't finish. Um, and same for the Jets in the first half. They scored a goal in the first half, obviously. Um, they had their chances as well. Second half, completely different ball game. Um, it was very much counter-attack from us. As soon as we get the ball in defense, it's straight up the pitch. Um, and we did, it, we did it very well, to be fair. We moved the ball very quickly. We were slick. We looked very dangerous going forward. But we'd get to the box and just we were not clinical at all. We lacked we lacked direction um, forward. It, it seemed as if we had no one to sort of take control of the game and forward. I mean, and really say, you know, this is what we need to do. This is how we're going to score. That sort of thing. Um, Honda played well through the middle when we broke. Barbarossa had a really good game uh, all night. But I, I just don't, I'm not happy with what we look forward, um, with how we look forward, sorry. To be fair, the two goals the Jets scored, first one, I can't remember it too well. Um, I'm pretty sure it was Johnny K, Johnny Katrumbus. Uh Fair goal, they deserved it. Second goal, uh, in injury time, no keeper in the world is stopping that. I'm, I'm putting it out there, no keeper in the world is stopping that. That was... An absolute worldie from uh, Dimi Petrados. And at the end of the day, the 2-0 result to the Jets was probably deserved in the way that we didn't deserve for how we were up top. But in general, I would say a 2-0 result probably doesn't look too good for us after that game. As we did dominate, we looked so much more dangerous and we really controlled the game for, for most of it. So... In end, a disappointing night, one that won't really go down in the history books for one of the great games. Um, the goal at the end, maybe, but it would have been a good game for mutuals, but for a victory supporter, it's one to forget, put behind, and um, move forward to next week, which we play host to Brisbane again in Melbourne. Um, I do want to say, though, there were people walking out of the ground, um, and, you know, before the end of the the um, final whistle and everything like that and there weren't many people wearing victory supporters weren't wearing their merchandise outside the stadium and things like that and I, I want to say if there are any victory supporters watching just wear your merchandise be proud of the club that you support be proud of you for supporting the club be proud of your players for giving it their all every week you know it's it's a thing where if you really support the club, it doesn't matter what the result was. It doesn't matter anything about that. You still support that club and your heart should still be there with it. So you'll always see myself wearing the uh, merchandise outside the ground all the way home because that's what you're supposed to do. So I'm not going to say that people who don't, uh, you know, disgusting and don't deserve to be members or fans or whatever and say they're not fans because they are. Everyone is still a fan and everyone is still a supporter. But be proud of being a supporter and don't feel like, you know, it's an embarrassment to wear your stuff out in public after a loss like that. Wear it proud and be part of the community that is the club. That's all. That's all I can say on that. But hopefully you enjoyed. 
Thank you for tuning in and I'm hoping that I will be back with some more content very soon. Peace.